special thanks to Bero Motors for providing the Clio 197 in this review, and as you can tell from this vehicle and from others which I've reviewed with them, this really is their kind of sweet spot. Affordable performance cars in the hot hatch category and beyond that you can use every day. So if you're in that part of the UK or maybe even a little bit further afield, check out the link right below this video in the description to see what their current stock is. When it comes to making really, really good hot hatches, Renault kind of knows what they're doing. And that's a major understatement, but at the same time, I find this very curious thing happens with a lot of Renault hot hatches, and in fact this has happened through the years to the point where you can look at it just based on raw numbers to back up what I'm saying. And that is that more so than really any other hot hatch, Renaults consistently have this phenomena of dropping in value after a couple of years, hitting rock bottom dirt cheap prices with a ton of car for the money, and then a few years after that beginning to rise to the point of getting almost, in some cases, kind of ridiculous. Look at a few examples. The Clio Williams. These days, 20, 30 grand, easy, if not more for a lower mileage example. Of course, a prime example, the Clio V6. 50 grand for a higher mileage one, 80 grand for a super low mileage one. Only a few years ago, it seems, in Evo magazine, I remember reading it as one of their 10 grand heroes. Now it's eight times that. The Clio 182. Again, this car's predecessor, based on that same generation that the V6 was. Now 15, 16 grand easy. And yet, now look at this. More power, newer car, 4,000 pounds. This exact car is 4,000 pounds. The Megan, similar thing. The big butt generation of Megans, which I think look great. I've loved that generation since it first came out. The 225, even my favourite Renault of all, the R26. They're not really that impressive on price. You get a lot of car for a dirt cheap amount of money. Even the variation between these Clio 197s on value doesn't really fluctuate that much. It's like four to eight grand, with very few going out of those margins, even with higher or lower miles. So what do you actually get for that money, and why am I bringing this up at all? Well, actually, I'm bringing it up for two reasons, because I believe you could either buy this car from the more Fiat Panda approach, wherein I praise that car and it's super cheap, great as a daily driver that's super fun, you could 100% have that same kind of approach and experience from something like this. Just a really cheap way of getting a 200 horsepower, properly quick little hot hatch and getting the most out of it. A beta, almost, if you will. On the other hand though, I would say that now is the time to get one as an investment, because they're not going to stay four grand forever as those predecessors show. Now that won't necessarily happen to all of them, but it's a pretty safe bet given the track record especially on ones like the Cup and the F1 edition. Now, when it comes to those ones, they still have the 197 horsepower, but they tend to focus more on stiffening up the steering, getting rid of some of the accoutrements that make the car easier to live with, less creature comforts, in other words. But this is just the normal, attainable, everyday hot hatch, if you will. So what do you get from this one as the most livable variation of the fast Clio? Well, you get a two litre, naturally aspirated engine. Of course, it's front engine, despite the fact that I think it kind of looks like a little homage to the Clio V6 with those chunky hips and the kind of little ball of muscular power design that it's got. As the name suggests, just under 200 horses. The torque isn't crazy, but it's not bad. I would still say they feel torquier than Honda Type R's and Honda takes a fairly similar approach to what Renault does with their cup and sport models, kind of that cornering focused, 200-ish horsepower naturally aspirated front wheel drive chassis, very similar in that regard. Performance though is very strong. The gearing is fairly close, so the top speed is only around the mid-130 region. Again, it's not a Megane, so it's not taking on Ford Focus RSs, etc., but the acceleration is very good. It's a fantastic rival, if nothing else, for something like a Corsa VXR, for example, which I also reviewed here on the channel. 0 to 60, 6.9 seconds completely stock. That's a really healthy number for a car like this, which isn't the absolute top tier contender. Much like a Honda Type R though, and I would imagine much like the Megane Cups and the R26 etc as well, 
Renault really gave this car the gift of cornering prowess. It's through the corners that you will by far have the most fun in something like a Clio 197. To the surprise of absolutely no one, that is where the car shines. And Renault has got it down to such an art at this point, even at this point, let alone over a decade later, that it still shines through all this time on and for such a low price. In terms of practicality, well, again, it's a Clio. It's not expensive to buy. Parts aren't too bad. For example, I would wager it's probably cheaper to replace most parts on this than, for example, my Golf R32. And although I haven't compared the prices, and they're not exactly the same calibre, I think you understand what I'm getting at. Again, it's that livable kind of hot hatch. Much like the Panda, nothing is too expensive on a car like this, even if it does break. Now that's one of the things that you might also be wondering about. What is going to break? What is the reliability like? The French aren't exactly known for making the most reliable cars around, and if these cars are so cheap, surely there's got to be a reason. Many people will legitimately be thinking that. Well, let's consider some of the issues, because they do occasionally have some, but again, let's be honest, Every single car in the world has a list of issues that can happen if you look through forums for long enough and get everyone's collective experience. So in the case of these 197s, the most common issues which I could find from those owners' forums tend to be starter motors, that's apparently a fairly early thing in lower mileage cars to go, water pumps, cam belts and auxiliary belts, they're recommended to change about every five years or just over 70,000 miles. They are known to sometimes have gearbox issues around the 40,000 mile or so mark, and generally speaking it seems like a consensus that they're a bit rougher until they've warmed up. So once you're on a longer trip and they have warmed up, totally fine, but initially a little bit of roughness there. Overall though, the consensus does seem to be that they're pretty solid. Generally speaking, about on par with a lot of their non-French rivals, for example. Maybe Volkswagens, Fords, even Vauxhalls, etc. So, they're in good company. I would not say, based on my research, that they seem any worse than any other hot hatch for reliability, so I wouldn't say that's too much of an issue to worry about. And in terms of what you get, I think ultimately I could condense my thoughts for the Clio 197, and I believe this could probably even apply to a 182 or a Megane 225, etc. as well. Maybe even the more hardcore versions of this car, like the Carp and the F1, with the stiffer suspension, more hardcore cornering focus, track day kind of stuff. By saying that, to me at least, something like a Clio 197 is more the kind of hot hatch for somebody who doesn't so much care about showing off, but more cares about actually getting the most smiles per mile, if you will, which is a common phrase in the petrol head world, out of their car. So in other words, if you want to look cool, you can certainly find much flashier, more boy racer, more overt hatches out there, either for this price or more. I'm sure you can think of a few. The Clio is not really that kind of car. As far as visuals go, it's fairly subtle. It's good looking, but it's subtle. It doesn't have huge wings and intakes and stripes all over the place. It's a semi-understated car. It's all about you as the driver. It's about getting behind the wheel, enjoying the shifting, enjoying the cornering, enjoying the brakes and the grip, and just getting lost in the moment of driving the car. That's the kind of hot hatch this is. And in that regard, I would say, once again, very similar to the approach which Honda takes with their Type R's. One of my criticisms of Honda Type R models that I've driven is that they only feel really good when you're pushing them really hard. So in normal driving conditions, to me at least, I know it's sacrilegious to say, I, I kind of find them boring. I'm sorry. This, I was worried, could fall into that. But something about Renault, maybe it's having a bit more of a thumpy approach to its torque. Whatever the case may be, it doesn't have that boredom. Because much like the Panda, maybe again it's that smaller size, it certainly could be, every speed feels faster than you're actually doing, and it feels more fun than sometimes a car with 30, 40, 50 horsepower more. So, spot on job by Renault as far as I'm concerned, and like I said, that is my verdict. This is a hot hatch for people who love using their hot hatch for them, to get their driving pleasure out of it, not someone who wants a hot hatch to show off like a boy racer to everyone else. It's not the loudest, it's not the most powerful, it's not the shoutiest visually, but it's a really nicely balanced, 
well-engineered little car for, at the moment, dirt cheap prices. Although, as I've said, I don't think they're going to stay that way, so nab a bargain now. Finally, though, in terms of that performance, although I mentioned, you know, it's not the loudest, the craziest, the most powerful, don't be fooled into thinking that these are not quick. The 197 is a properly quick little car with that 197 horsepower, with that small front-wheel drive, six-speed manual chassis and drivetrain layout. It can do up to 60 in 6.9 seconds. That's properly quick, and like a decade, even half a decade before that, that would have been up there with the best of them in terms of hot hatch territory. So as I've said in other videos, the hot hatch world waits for no one, and the acceleration of change is almost more notable than any other category of car. This is another prime example of that. Of course, top end speed isn't quite as strong due to the gearing and the power, about the mid 130-ish, 135 mile an hour region, but again, for most of the time, do you really need more than that on UK roads? Probably not. Not if you want to keep your car on your license anyway. So as I always like to say, if you were an owner of a 197, maybe a Cup, maybe even a different one like a Megane 225 or an older Clio perhaps, drop your stories down below, maybe warnings or things that you maybe think I got wrong in the video, etc. for other owners, so that those people who want to buy one can check out the video, look at those comments, and potentially benefit from it. But until next time, I'll see you then with another review. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.